Howdy and welcome to the Mighty Mode Chuck channel. I, as a Chuck, this video is going to be on the Mandela Effect. Um, to start with, let me s say that the theory that I'm working from, now understand this doesn't mean this is the correct theory, it doesn't mean it's the only theory, it doesn't mean it's the right theory, but the theory that I'm working from is that we live in a computer-like world. Now, that does not mean the world is a simulation. It does not mean the world is a hologram. What it means is, is when the great souls, the God complex, when it emerged from the void, when these souls emerged from the void, the world they created was computer-like. The world is by intellectual design, and that design is computer-like. Now, what that means is the foundation of this world that they created is time. Now, time is not what it is defined as by most people. You might call this time, too. Uh, it's a different type of time. But it's important to compare it to time, to phrase it as time, because, yeah. <laughs> but time is computer code, and it is the foundation of this world. Time is computer code. And uh, not only does computer code exist into the world that we're born into, but we change that computer code. That computer code is not... Uh, set where it can't be changed. It's constantly being changed. Say you like to build things. Say uh, you build a coffee table. Well, you've created something and that it becomes part of the foundation of the world you exist in. That computer, that computer, that coffee table is is part of a, de a decor. You may constantly throw things on. I mean, it, you interact with it. You throw things on. You put your feet up on it. You put your glasses down on it when you're eating, for example, maybe, perhaps. So that coffee table you build becomes um, part of your episode time, the, the episodes in your life, the episodes of time. Now, when we're between lives, we're still in this computer-type system. You know, a lot of psychics say, well, when you're on the other side, time doesn't exist. Well, it's different. The way that computer code, you know, you interact with it, it's different. It's a lot different. It's still computer code. You're still in a computer-type system, even when you're between lives. Now, um, you're born into this world. At some point, you go back into the other part of the computer program. Now, from the other part of the computer program, you can visit into different parts of time. You can do that in, this, in the soul state. What's more, uh, your soul may travel back to, uh, say, the old Wild West, and you can be born into the old Wild West. Well, what you do there can change right now. And that's part of where the Mandela Effect comes from is the souls can travel to different parts of the computer program. They can be born in the past. They can be born in the future. You can relive the same life more than once. And no matter where you're at in the computer program, you can change that computer code, and you change the computer code in the past. Well, you change the episodes leading up to right now, and so on. Time changes. Computer code changes. And that is the Mandela Effect. Now, I realize that some people are partial to the idea of string theory, entanglement, and the multiverse theory, and the multiverse theory being that uh, every potential um, outcome is there, and it's part of a different uh, universe. And that, In other words, there's an infinite number of multiverses. I don't really buy into that. Um, I think when we change time, it's possible that we do create uh, a parallel universe. In other words, if there's a major change, uh, like, okay, there's a major change where Mandela didn't die. Okay, perhaps there's still a universe there where he did die. When, time's ch when time is changed, in, in a big way, not minor ways, but in a big way, it, it may create a, a parallel universe. And parallel universes, they, they may, like, time may, a change in time may correct itself. In other words, during a certain episodic period, uh, there may be a, a change in time, but the river may still want to flow back into its correct banks. And so that time corrects itself. And what was changed, eventually, it, it's irrelevant. It doesn't really matter anymore. The changes just become irrelevant. But while they are relevant, 
it may create a, a parallel universe. For example, say South Africa enters a new period of upheaval. And it's the same, what's, in other words, what's about to happen in South Africa would have happened irregardless of Mandela. Whether he lived, died, it doesn't matter. The river is flowing back into the bank. What was going to happen to South Africa is going to happen anyway. Now, souls are always trying to tr change things, I think that. And um, you've got to realize that we're not all on the same page. One community of souls may be trying to accomplish this. Another community of souls may be trying to accomplish that. And, and they may be you know, butting heads and, and working in opposite directions, trying to change things. One group of souls thought the world might be better with Mandela alive. Another group of souls might have thought the world would be better off with him. <laughs> uh, so th th those souls might have worked against one another and tried to change time. In other words, one, at one, one period, those group of souls was able to accomplish what they wanted to accomplish. He died in prison. Another group of souls, they wanted to prevent that from happening. So then he didn't die in prison. But irregardless of them trying to change what's happening on planet Earth through the events in South Africa, irregardless of those, that, that parallel universe that's created with, with two different things happening because of the activities of those souls working against one another, irregardless of all that, time may still flow back into the riverbank. That computer code may eventually go back to where it would have been irregardless of that particular episode in history. Because, you know, as I say, we're all just dust in the wind, <laughs> you know. In the long run, to what degree do we, you know, affect and impact things? You know, say we were, we were alive back in um, ancient times and um, we may have played a part in the fall of the Roman Empire. But um, then the Western civilization rose again irregardless and it really didn't matter whether rome eventually evolved into what we've got now without the chaos or with the chaos the outcome would eventually have been the same irregardless but that may not always be the case you know that they're that like i mean there there may be some major differences that do that do not correct themselves quickly or easily. And so those parallel universes, they, you know, they pretty much stay in their own, uh, the, they form their own riverbank, so to speak, and they don't flow back into the, the primary riverbank, if that makes sense. To put it a different way, in episodic history, civilizations rise, civilizations fall. It, it, the happenings is a lot longer than what many of us think. Uh, the computer system is a lot more vast than many of us think. It may even include existences on other planets. And uh, did anything that happened, so, say Atlantis is real, and uh, we all had major lives there, and we tried to accomplish things there. We had agendas there. We thought we were, you know, hot stuff doing stuff there. But... Um, Eventually, did anything that happened on Atlantis, other than the degree it affected us, you know, our souls, affected how we think, how we, you know, how it changed us, how our life on Atlantis changed us, or our life in ancient Rome changed us, only to the degree that it actually changed us, not time, but us, does the... Um, Does it really matter? In, in other words, what happened in, in Atlantis or ancient Rome, to what degree does it impact right now, this moment? Only to the degree that it changed the way that we perceive, we think, the way we react, the way we do stuff. Only to the degree that our lives in those different civilizations, only to the degree that it affects us and how we do things, does it really change time in the long run. Now, as I said, community of souls do have agendas. They do like to change time. <laughs> they, they like to, they, um, they, they just do. <laughs> but, um, say we, um, we live the same life more than once. We choose to live the same life more than once. 
And some communities of souls may do that together because they want to change time. They want to change the future. That, that happens. But generally speaking, when we live the same life over again, it's about us. It's not about time. It's not about the computer program. It's not about um, how we can change time, except how it impacts us and how we can work things out and figure things out and um, be who we want to be. So that's the primary reason we, we go into these different lives. It's about us. It's, it's generally not about time. That said, there are communities of souls that work together and in opposite directions attempting to impact time because they think that there needs to be a major change in the way that that particular episode in history is because they want to live a different life in that time period. And, and to the degree they want to live a different life in the future time period. So by changing the past, you know, they can change the close future. In the long run, it doesn't really matter. So the people who uh, tend to believe in string theory and entanglement and the multiverse theory, uh, they tend to think that there's an infinite number of universes from the get-go. Okay, so basically what I'm saying in my theory in this computer-like world that we live in, uh, the uh, parallel universes have to be created by us, by the communities of souls, by the, by the changes that we make. In other words, there's not an infinite number of universes out there based on probability or possibility or math. The only parallel universes that exist out there is the time the computer code that we create and change with the lives that we live and we can live in the past, we can live in the future, we can relive this current life. And um, as we make changes, we probably do create parallel universes, though they, they may be, they may seem to be permanent because they're, you know, so long and vast, but generally all rivers flow into the ocean. At some point, the whatever happened in that civilization, because civilizations rise and fall, the civilization that we're living in right now, it will fall eventually. It will collapse because that is the nature of the way the system is designed. It's not designed for civilizations to go on forever any more than it's designed for us individually to go on forever. Civilizations rise and fall. You know, we come and go. <laughs> Um, it's just a theory. It's just a theory. Much thanks for watching and listening. I appreciate it. And one thing I want to, I, I will get back to uh, something that I didn't put in uh, one of my videos. There was a, a bit of, um, a personal stuff that kind of goes to the Mandela effect. And I just was reluctant to uh, go into it. Plus that video was already too long. And up then this video is already too long as well, but I do plan to go into, um, something that's kind of interesting. And kind of points to what I'm talking about. Um, to, to how quickly I'll do that video, I'm not sure. But I do plan to make it. And uh, it will be about the Mandela Effect and, and some weirdness in my personal life. Much thanks for watching and listening. I do appreciate it. Thank you. You're cool, man. You're cool. You're so cool.